Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the Scripture Cathedral. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm going to stay right here and wait till you guys come on and you can share this. And I just want to thank God for another day. Uh, it may be snowing on the outside, but it's still a good day. Uh, it's a blessed day, and I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I know many of you are at home today uh, because of the weather. Uh, Scripture Cathedral, uh, I counseled the service on today. I didn't want anybody to have any mishaps, so I want you to stay safe and uh, stay at home with your family and enjoy the day. Uh, but we can still have church. <laughs> church can go anywhere. Uh, because the church is not a building. The church is your, your personal self. Uh, today I have uh, the elders with me. And I'm glad that perhaps God wanted it this way. So today I want you to, to make sure you uh, share this. Uh, perhaps we can help you on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Um, so I'm going to wait a little bit and let you come on in and then again share it and let people know that Scripture Cathedral is on live. On last night, I was, uh, I was actually watching the game. I was watching the Lakers and the Celtics. And uh, while I was watching it, I'm on my phone scrolling through scriptures. Because God said to me while I was watching the game, he said, what's going on now? What is, what is wrong with Christians, Christians today? Um, but every time I ask that question, I'm, I'm becoming less surprised now because the Bible already speaks of of what's happening. Um, let me say it this way. The pandemic has fast tracked some people's demise as far as being Christian. Um, what I found out is that you had some people that before the pandemic, their attendance was sporadic. Uh, some people, um, I don't think they read the word of God. They didn't, they didn't pray. And then when the pandemic came, it enhanced their ability. Um, see, when you're hungry, um, you need food. Now, if I get hungry now, if I can just get some junk food, I can survive a little bit um, but in this particular instance some people were not getting junk food they weren't getting anything and they are not getting anything so I'm gonna ask my elders what 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 what's gonna happen to a person uh, that is not uh, engaged has has disconnected themselves what's gonna happen Okay. It's almost like a gas station. You can't continue to pass the gas station. You're gonna run out of gas. I'm glad you said that. Have you ever have you ever done this? And I've seen people do it. You you your gas is low. Yes. The yellow light is on. Yes. Or uh, or your dashboard is telling you you only got ten miles. Yes. So what you do is you try to go to your favorite gas station so you keep passing all these other yes. gas stations. True. Some people get caught. Yes. They run out of gas. They run out of gas. And when you run out of gas, listen, I want Christians to know this. When you disconnect and run out of, out of, out of, out of, out of the spirit of the Holy Ghost, you run into other problems. Yes. When you run out of gas with your car, the newer cars, 
there's, I, I remember a young lady had a Volvo. She ran out of gas, but they had told her, if you ever run out of gas, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars to get that car started again. Yes. And uh, so you're going to run into other problems. Yes. So, so it is with the Christian. You said they are they're going to get weak. And the thing about it, when you, when you, when you become weak, the devil begins to whisper ah, okay. to you to let you know, well, you know, you all right, you, you, you know, you, you, you don't have to come this day or you don't have to come that day. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is we need spiritual strength. Yes. We are, we are, we consist of body, soul, and spirit. That's right. And you have to have that connection with God. When you lose a particular connection, then you're going to have a shorted wire. Mm. Oh, that goes to Elder Johnson's field. Yes. If you have a shorted wire, you're in trouble, right? You're in trouble. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. What's, what's connected to it will not operate right. It mm. completely shuts down. And, you know, Elder Parker brought up a, a valid point. Um, it, anything that we put in our bodies mm -hmm. is going to affect us in one way or That's another. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, to this point, the other day, my son had this car, mm -hmm. and he tried to get it through emissions, mm -hmm. and it kept failing. The problem was he was putting wrong gas in the Ooh. car. Um, say, for instance, now, you know, like you said, with this pandemic going on, and like you said, what are, what are, what are people eating? Say, for instance, like you said, you can, eat, you can eat some of everything, but guess what? Is your blood pressure going up? Is it affecting your sugar level? Mm -hmm. Same thing spiritually. You, you, you stop just grabbing anything. And That's right. You, you think it's not affecting you, and it's really causing you problems in certain aspects because you're not spiritually being fed properly. Now, you're eating, but that don't mean that you're eating properly. So, so with your natural body, I talked about the junk food, yes. but you cannot always eat junk food. It'll cause a problem. And I, I found out when I was younger, I didn't have a problem with McDonald's. Now, every time I eat McDonald's, it affects my body. Yes. And, and now, it, it, the older you get, <laughs> it seems like your body changes to a certain point where you have to have supplements. That's right to put back what your body is no longer producing anymore. Hmm. So, so a, a scripture, and it, it helped me tremendously because it helps me to understand. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses one through three. Now we beseech you brethren mm -hmm. by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him mm -hmm. that ye be not soon shaken in mind mm -hmm. or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letters from us as that that day of Christ is not at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a fallen away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, if you notice in verse 3, it did not say, don't let a spirit deceive you. It didn't say, don't let things deceive you. It said, let no man. Yes. Now, what happens is, the spirit gets in that man to deceive you. Yes, sir. And so I said, okay, I got it. So the reason why churches all across the world are losing people, people are walking away, because they have to. Somebody has to fulfill the Bible. That's correct. It says a great, see, I can say Oh, we're going to have a falling away. Why didn't it just say a falling away? Why didn't it say, oh, some people are going to leave? It said a great. 
so great is a lot. Yes. Yes, Seasoned saints falling away. Yes. <laughs> Some people, and I, I got to drive this home because this is what's in my spirit. Some people have not been in church since March of last year. Yes. The problem I have with it is there's safety in the house, number one. Now, I'm not saying that if someone has the virus, well, you can't uh, contract it because you're in the church, because you can. But I just believe, this is my belief, I believe God protects you yes. when you come in the house. Now, so the problem I have is you can't come here, but you can go to a restaurant and sit in a restaurant for two hours. You can go to a store, Walmart or Target or whatever, and sit or walk around looking for things for two hours, three hours. So what's wrong with people's mind? Let, let me do this before you say that. Come on, Tim. Come on. I need, I need, I need this, the chairman of the board because maybe he can put some insight because we always are on. I need someone. Get a chair. Get, a, get him a mic. So go ahead, Elder Pargo, while he's doing that. The thing about it is, is that when you lose spiritual sight, mm -hmm. number one, when you lose um, the ability to know what's important in your life. Norm normally what people do is they leave out the spiritual man. Mm -hmm. You need the spiritual man as well as the natural man. Right. Be but what happens is we outweigh the spiritual man with natural stuff. Mm. So, 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 so what happens is there becomes a Imbalance. Uh, imbalance. So listen to me, and, 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 and people can, can, can say I'm crazy, but you know you can be too spiritual? Yes. Or you can be too natural? Yes. You, becomes, you become carnal. That's right. So be careful of people that are too spiritual. Yes. They won't laugh. Every time you see them, they go, oh. ah. Right. Those are the ones you really got to watch. Mm -hmm. There has to be a mix, a blend. A, yes, a balance. A balance. Yes. That's you right. You have to have a balance. You have to have a balance. Um, in life, you have to have a balance. Yes, you do. Whatever you do, you have to. You can't work 24 hours. You got to sleep. You got to eat. But mm -hmm. a carnal man will work 16, 17 hours a day. And then he'll say, I'm too tired to go to church. See, that's because what, what happens is, is that you feel as though you get to some sort of point that you're doing it on your own. You have no need. Well, your attitude says you have no need of God. Mm. You have no need of his help or his assistance. I'm doing this on my own. I got this car on my own. I got this house on my own. I got everything, everything you see right here, I got on my own. So, 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 Elder Johnson might have to have case in point. In the Bible, I want to say it was the Israelites. They forgot yes. what God brought them through. Every time... When you look in the Old Testament, God gives fair warning. Yes. When thou, after he told him, once I bring you into this land, after thou art, have eaten and art full, mm. thou shalt not forget where God has brought you from. And, and the minute they forgot where God brought them from and started doing other things and found other things to replace what God had did, the consequences was devastating of that decision you know you can't for, you can't forget about God and that's the m most important thing in Christendom is this when God brings you out and saves you he does wonders 
That's right. I mean, wonders, unbelievable wonders. With, with, with you, your health, your finance, your money, everything about you, when it's attached to kingdom living, you can't, God has the best plan going, hands down, if we do what he says. But if you do not, if you go outside of what he said, then there's, there's, there were consequences. I mean, great consequences to pay. So, Deacon Smith, what do you think the problem is with Christians that, or what, what, what's going to happen to a Christian that hasn't been to church since March? I personally believe that if the scripture talks about us as a people looking at the outer appearance of a person. Yes. And God seeing the heart. I believe that every person that is not in church, for whatever particular reason, God knows your heart as to why you're not there. That's right. So God, I believe God will judge them accordingly. Okay. Um, I won't assume that because a person isn't in church mm -hmm. that they are not utilizing the avenues that are available to them to stay up to par, meaning praying at home, uh, fasting along with the church because we were right. on a fast. Today is the 31st. So, Okay, I got you. And I understand that because God does look at the heart. But you also have the people that serve him with their lips. Absolutely. He said you, uh, you serve me with your lips. That's right. But your hearts are far from far me. Far from me. So I believe God will in return. You will see the fruit of that. You okay. will see the fruit of that. So let me put a twist to the question. Is your heart to God if you can't come to church, but you can go everywhere else? I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so because I, I know people personally mm -hmm. that um, don't miss a beat when it comes down to day-to-day -day life. That's right. But they can't come to church. Mm. And I get it if your particular church isn't open. Right. You know, but if you have a facility that you can go to, you know, and the choice is yours. But if you are if you are using a pandemic as an excuse not to come, but you're not using the pandemic to say, well, I'm going to use, what is it, like Peapod or whatever to have my groceries come to my house. There you go. But you go to the grocery store and you spend uh, ample amount of time in the grocery store. And just about anything now today, you can get it online and have it delivered to you. So, you know what I equate that to? With Today is snowing. Mm -hmm. Some people already made up in their mind last night mm -hmm. that I'm not going to church. Absolutely. And if they had awakened this morning and it was no snow, they had already planned it. They had already planned it. You, you get where I'm going? So what you do is you use excuses. You use excuses. And all excuses, my daddy taught me this, all excuses are lies. But in the eyes of the person, it's legitimate. That's right. So, so, so think about this. The person that hasn't been here since March, they feel legitimate today because the church is closed and it's snowing. They feel legitimate, and <laughs> then they also feel legitimate because there is a pandemic. So That's right. That is their legitimacy to say. But see, but, see. but Pastor, I noticed, I watched the, the Zoom. Uh-huh. I mean, or the, the live. You can see who tunes in. That's right. So... Let's just say, I'm not going to say that your heart is not for God. Right. But if this is your ministry, mm -hmm. if this is your ministry, right. and your heart is for this ministry, you should at least watch. That's right. You should at least give a thumbs up. Let you me should, tell you something. You know. See, we were talking about when you're drifting or disconnected, it causes other problems. Yeah. I'm sitting here as the pastor and tell you that some people that have not been here, they have not tithed, they have not given offerings. So it's, it, it's like, a, what you call it, they come down the mountain and snow, it, and it, it's avalanche. avalanche. Yeah. You see, it just comes on you and overtakes you. Right. So, I, I, listen, I understand. If, if you're sick, I get it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to come back and tell you I don't get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, the reason I'm saying that is because 
I go to Psalm 91, and I really believe that. He will cover you with his wings. He'll put you in a secret place. I believe if I'm doing the right thing, the right thing in God's sight, he's not going to let nothing evil come upon me. You understand what I'm saying? So, all right, here we go. If you get ill, sick, I mean sick, do you stay at home or do you go to the hospital? So I equate, I got it in my notes. I got it in my notes. I equate the church in the spiritual realm as a hospital. You get me? And, and, and you got to want to be healed. See, what you, un- you got to understand this. Some people, like right, when they're watching the service, there's nothing like being in here. There's a certain anointing that comes in the house that might be the anointing of healing that you can't get watching. You, you, gotta, you understand where I'm going? So you, you got you to gotta be careful. You, 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 you got to be very, very careful. Now, like I said, th- this is what gets me. I have senior citizens that get here. Yes, sir. Right. They catch Metro Access and get here. Mm-hmm. Then you have people that are so-called okay, have their own cars and everything, and they won't come. But see, I figured it out. See, it wasn't the pandemic. You look at their, their record, their attendance before the yes, pandemic. Yes, Y'all got to understand. I know I can't judge nobody, but I think God gives a man of God a certain amount of judgment. Yes, because if he didn't, why is he going to ask me about you when we get to heaven? Right. You got to understand that. My job is to just say, no, I got to make you understand this. So, so go, go to, go to uh, uh, let's go to... 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. It's right there. Everything I'm talking about is right there. This note also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Do y'all see that? Yes. They're there. They're right. I told somebody the other day. Tim was, he was talking, right? And he said he begged Bishop to let him in Revelations class. And he kept saying, you're too young, but he let you in. Now, this is what I'm saying. The stuff that my dad was talking about when you were, what, 16? I was 16, 17. How old are you now? 41. Now, listen. 41. What he was talking about, you didn't see it. Didn't see it. Now you see it. See it now. That's right. So, perilous times. Go ahead, go ahead, Elder John. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good. Oh, so you trying to tell me because I'm doing the right thing, people hate me. Yes, sir. Ooh. What? Yes, sir. Can't stand me. Can't stand me. Look at them up there talking about I need to come to church. They can't stand me. Yes, sir. I'm only telling you the right thing. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Traitors. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Stop right there. Lovers of pleasure. I guarantee you, if I had a baby reveal at my house, they'll get there some kind of way. Yes, sir. If I had a birthday party, they'll get there. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Picnic. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 a buffet. Pleasure. More than lovers of God. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, uh, go ahead. Number six. Go to verse six. No, go to, go to verse five. Have a. Verse five. Uh-huh. Having a form of God. Stop. Mm-hmm. I tell y'all all the time. Everybody that shout, they only doing it because they have a form. Speak in, you, can have, you can speak in tongues, but you have a form. Because yes, you know. It's almost like, what do you call it? Because I, my eyes bat. It's, it's, no, it's natural. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying bat eyes. They just do it. My hands move. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what they have. 
They have a form because they've been around. Mm -hmm. They know. Oh, let me tell you. You know, when we're in church and the Spirit of God is in here and everybody praising him, some people are praising him or praising, but they're not praising him. It's self. What I mean, they're not praising it, but they're just an emotion. Mm -hmm. It's emotions. Yes, sir. Perfect example. Every Sunday, every Sunday, the Spirit of God comes through and the people get to moving and, uh, and, and, and you can see it. But I have two five or six-year-old mm -hmm. young ladies over there uh, that know how mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to shout. Mm -hmm. You know why they know? Because they watching. Yes, sir. And you have grown folk that watch and say, well, I, let me do this. Let me move. Right. Yes, sir. You got to understand that. I've seen the Spirit of God come. And uh, I have officials that won't move. My Lord. Mm -hmm. See, and then you, oh, I always say this. The Bible did not say, now, I want you to praise me because you're saved. I want you to praise me. <laughs> That's right. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I believe, I believe animals praise God in some kind of way. My Lord. The birds chirp. The dogs bark. Yes, sir. That's right. And the reason I can say that, you can tell a difference in your dog's bark. You know when he's at attention and something's wrong. Yes, sir. And then you know when he's just playing with you. Yes, sir. We as people, God knows. Yes, sir. He, knows. he knows when you're praising him and it's not in your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. But on the outside, you said it. it on the outside, I, I, can't, I can't say, oh, well, no, nah, unless you got discernment. I know. I'm telling you, you can, you can tell. Once you've been saved yes, long sir. enough, you can tell when somebody's just going through the motion. Yes, sir. You can tell. Yes, sir. You know, Pastor D, an advertisement, um, you know, say, for instance, if I want you to buy this product That's, right yes and it's not the original mm. now the, the advertisement will use the same colors as the original that's right and will put a different name on it that's right and you, you you think you're getting clorox but you're, you're getting something else they now, do all that all the, the time and we'll go in there and grab it that's right because we look it looks like it looks it, like the you, real thing when you get it home that's right it's not going to work the same it's it's diluted is it's not going to do the same job. So they have a form of God, godliness, godliness, but they deny the power thereof. So what are we supposed to do with people like that? From, from, from what? From first time away. That's and, right. And then the Bible says you're going to know them by their works. That's right. And, and, and see, the, people hate me for this. That's why I always tell you, be careful. Who you hang with. Be careful who you associate with. The Bible says from such. Turn away. Turn away. And, you know, and Pastor, to your point, see, they think we, we're not being judgmental. Right. You're, you're, judging, you're, you're judging yourself. We're not condemning you. The Bible says, Jesus said, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but through me that the world might be saved. Now, the, now the problem is we don't read fine print. Mm. We don't read fine print. Hold your thought. You bought a house before. You bought a house. Yes, you bought a car. Mm -hmm. Did y'all read everything on that oh, contract? No. no what? Why not? <laughs> too, too, much. Much. too much. See, what people don't understand yeah. is you could be good with your mortgage, mm -hmm. but there is a clause in there that said they can take your house or call the loan at any time. Yes. Yes, but you don't see that. Don't see so that. that means you could pay 10 years of payments and they say, you know what, we want it all or we want the house. Mm -hmm. People don't read. Right. Yeah. And you can... You can and and that's the and that's the problem. The the church is not condemning you. We're not condemning you. It's already written. It's almost like somebody that smoked. It says on the on the pack, this might cause cancer. Right. That's right. But yet you smoke. That's right. And it might cause. Are, are, are we condemning you? No. The, what's written is condemning you. That's right. Only thing we're doing is reaffirming what has all right. and giving you fair warning to let. Everyone know that this is what's coming down the pipe. That's right. Regardless of who you are, it's coming down the pipe. And to your point, Elder Johnson, everything is advisory when it comes to the world. But when you state what the word of God says, mm. that's when people fall into the, the mind frame. Oh, you judging me. That's right. It's already there. That's 
just right. like you said, the Surgeon General warning is on the cigarette pack. It's there. You know, God's general warning is in the Bible. It's there. But when you reinforce it, it's only when it comes to church that people have the mindset of you judging me. Or, you we, know. We've had conversations where we wonder why um, people attach themselves to certain ministries. And you always say it's accountability. accountability. Scripture Cathedral has always been a church that looks at accountability. Yes, sir. Especially in leadership. Yes, sir. When Bishop was pastoring, yes, sir. it was accountability. Yes, sir. You didn't come to Bible class. You, 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 your minister, your elder, whatever. No Bible class. You didn't come to prayer service. Yes, it, that's accountability. Yes, so what happens is sometimes when people are, are made to be accountable, mm -hmm. they leave. They go somewhere where they can just sit in the back and have nothing. I believe God wants accountability. Yes, sir. I do. I mean, do y'all think God wants accountability? Pastor D, this, this is, this is, this is my, my problem. There's no child of mine that my wife given birth to that we have had. Mm -hmm. I don't care where they go. They can go from here to, to, to New England. When it comes down, if something happened to them, yeah. they're going to want to know. They're going to check their DNA That's right. and who is their mama and who is their daddy. Every time I go to the doctor, mm -hmm. there, are a, there is a particular section of questions. They want to know your history. Mm -hmm. Who was your mama? Who was your daddy? Who was your grandma? Mm -hmm. Did they have high blood pressure? Mm -hmm. Did, you, you get what I'm saying? They need to know. They got to follow the lineage. And, and that's what I'm saying there. Okay, they came here, but they can never get us out of their blood right. because of accountability. That's right. That DNA is still attached to them. That's right. No matter where they go, Scripture Church is in their DNA. Is in that, in, <laughs> is, and they can't get rid of it. Mm. When they check their history, when they want to know where they came from, and even if you're trying to advance yourself, you know, I can't even get a job sometimes. If you go out here, they want to know who did you work for? That's right. Where did you right. come from? What did you do when you were there? I'll give you a case and point on that. Remember years ago, you could get a ticket in D.C. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, and never get caught. Yes. To pay it. Yes, sir. But then they all hooked up together. Yes, sir. Now, there's one main computer, so they'd be like, no, 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 no. You got right. tickets in D.C. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know about that? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. Pastor, when it comes down to, back to one point you made about accountability, God made Moses accountable because when something happened in the camp, right. he went to the person he placed over those people. That's right. And that was Moses. Any man of God that God appointed, he always went to them first. So you're saying he's not going to go to somebody that's... No. No, sir. He's not... He's coming to me. Yes. He's going to come to you because um, let's look at Eli. And his two sons. Yes. Because God told, you know, the man Samuel told Eli, he said, listen, if you don't control your sons, God is going to remove your right hand. Mm -hmm. that's, your, that's your authority. Your right hand is your right. authority. He said, look, I'm going to remove your right hand. And when he didn't do anything, then his kids was killed. And then when they took the ark into battle, when they came back and told him, he fell off the bench that's and right. broke his neck. Mm -hmm. Because he was accountable for his children, and he was accountable for the people of God so his, and that ark. His lack of accountability killed yes, him. His lack of accountability. You wow. Pastor, you on that note, in the book of Ezekiel, I believe it's like the third or fourth chapter, maybe the fifth chapter. I just read it. God told Ezekiel, look, this is what I want you to do. When I send you to speak a word, speak what I tell you. Mm. Because you're giving them a warning. He said, if you don't warn them, if you warn them, the blood won't be on your hand. hand. Right. But if you, if, yes. they, if you warn them and they listen to you, they're going to live. But if they don't want, listen to you, yes. then they're going to die. Mm. But the blood won't be on your hand. Wow. It's just like the, it's just like the watchman. The watchman is in the tower. Sir. What you what is told to you by God, you supposed to tell it to the people. That's right. And if you don't, the blood is on your hand, just like you said. And if we don't heed, then we'll be killed. See, the the thing now is, I'm the watchman. Yes. 
I shouldn't have to come out of my tower for certain things. No. And Moses' father-in-law yes. told him, mm -hmm. listen, this is too much. Yes. Get you, what is it, 70 yes, sir. men mm -hmm. that have your spirit. Yes. That's the key. Yes. They have your spirit. And let them handle the lesser or little thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The watchmen have watchmen. That's right. To watch the people. That's right. And that ties into accountability. Yes, it does. Because you can't keep up with everybody. It but you have people who can keep up with them. You know, you have groups, you have deacons, you have missionaries, you have ministers. So you have people to facilitate That's right. over those people. You have ushers, you have an usher so, 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 So you're the chairman of the deacon board. Yes, I hold you accountable for the deacon. So if I say to you, where is so-and-so, what's going on there, and you can't answer me ever, mm -hmm. that's, that's a problem. problem. Yes. I'm not holding up my end of that's the right. of accountability. That's right. And the importance of accountability is because accountability speaks for your action. That's right. What you do, how you act. If, 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 like Elder Johnson said, he has children, and, and if these children go anywhere and they do something, they're going to wonder who the children are, because they're, trying, they're going to figure out they're going to try to figure out why this child is acting the way they're acting. Does it stem from the home? That's Does right. It, you know, so your accountability equates to what you've done or what you're doing or how you act. It's your history. The police call that your MO. Your MO. That's right. Yes, sir. That's how they catch a lot of people yes, because sir. of their yes, MO. Yes, sir. That's what they do. What they operate. So. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly mm -hmm. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, stop. Everything I'm telling you is why you're seeing a great falling away. Mm -hmm. Seducing spirits. Why, why would it go seducing spirits and then come back and say doctrine of devil? Mm -hmm. So seducing spirits. See, people get it. They think in uh, spirits like, oh, people. No. Seducing spirits can be anything that takes you away from God. Yes, yeah, but then, Pastor D, once it does that, then it has to be a doctrine there. That's that right. You were there once they seduce you out. And that's why, yes. once they get the doctrine of the devil, yes. they combat those that are holding up God's blood-stained banner. And, 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 you know, when you think about it, you say, then, what is, what is doctrine? That's right. What, what is doctrine? It is a set of rules to govern yourself that's by. That's right. I think you say it all the time. What if there were no rules in the world? What if there was, what if you, you could, there were no red lights? Chaos. That's right. So God always had order. Yes, sir. Always. God had order in heaven before he even did all of this down here. That's, That's why, why he Satan kicked them out. Kicked That's right. Because Satan didn't want to follow the order. order. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's always been order. You don't have order, you're in trouble. Yes. And listen, I'm like, I always say this. Some doctrine, see, people get doctrine and traditions mixed up. Mm -hmm. Most doctrine is good. Now, traditions, eh. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I've seen my father. Mm -hmm. he, had a, he had a tradition of no woman preachers. Yes, sir. Right. He did it for years. Then something said No. And he changed, he changed it. it. But you don't really supposed to change your doctrine. Yes, sir. That's right. You get me? Yes, they get mixed up. And remember, women can't wear pants. It didn't even mean that. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then what about all of us that got on wool coats? Because if you go in there, it'll tell you you're not supposed to wear certain material yes, together. That's blended. Yes. So you got to, you, you got to, the, the basic thing in life that I found out, Especially since I've had, you got to read. Yes. And you got, not only do you got to read, but you got to understand. That's why you got to, it says, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Some people, see, this is how people mess up. If you only come in and let somebody tell you something, 
You got to read. You don't read for yourself. So I can say, you know what? I can, I can say to this. I got a couple of deacons over there. Hey, you guys go up on the roof and jump off and God's going to save you. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. Right. No, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yes, sir. So you got to read for yourself. Yes. And past the day, it's not easy to do for some people. It's not easy to do for people that has done it for a long time or perhaps a scholar. It takes certain types of training and certain uh, levels of understanding that you can't just read the Bible. You that's know, right. You have to read, you know, commentaries. That's you right. Because you have to get the understanding of the original text that's and right. what the scripture actually meant so that you don't teach and preach out of context. That's right. And a lot of times people are teaching and preaching out of context because they don't understand the original foundation of what that scripture meant. You know, like, like you said with the scripture with, you know, not wearing right. pants. Pant. And then when you read that and you understand the time of when that was written it, in the Bible, pants wasn't even in existence exactly. at that time. So how do you even tell a woman she exactly. can't wear pants? That's they right. They weren't even invented. That's right. That's right. You're absolutely right. See, and that's the thing. Besides the Bible, when I was in school, I would read the assignment. I still couldn't get it. That's why I had to have a professor yes, to sir. break it down yes. to help me understand it. Comprehend it yes, Comprehension is vital when, you, when you're a child of God. Yes. If not, those seducing spirits and those doctrines will come and take over. Yes. That's right. Lord. You know, it, I think it was God had a problem. Was it the Pharisees talking about you shouldn't eat this and eat that? Yes. And then they came back, everything God made is good to eat. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people, yeah, they get it all mixed up. See, Pastor, what people do is, in some cases, they use this. They use the word of God to try to fit what they need to get people to Oh, do. so so that means I'll go read Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, mm. but I'm not going to the 15th verse. Yes. The curses. Right. Ah. Oh, it okay. all depends what you want. It all depends what you want people to do. It, it's just like on most jobs, they have rules and regulations. Right. So that's what you want people to do. To do That's as right. far as your business is concerned but when it comes down to the word of God we have to go by the word of God if you don't go by the word of God then again it'll be chaos That's right. Pastor, mm. I've had this conversation with you we've had a conversation several times about the generation yes and what my great-grandparents did mm -hmm. when my grandparents had children they didn't believe in everything that they did so they wipe some of that stuff out when they had their children. Right. And then when my grandparents had my mother and those children, and then my mother had me and my siblings, my mom didn't agree with everything that my grandmother thought right. was right. So you wonder why each generation gets worse, worse or the moral right. levels of them go down. Because with each generation, there's a cutting away of what was a principle or what. You know, everything isn't a, necessarily about uh, spiritualism or That's right. being holy or whatever. But some things are just moral value. That's you right. know, and you lose that with each generation because you're not teaching what the generations taught before. Let's, so in the spiritual, uh -huh. you have Elder Parker, you have Elder Johnson. Mm -hmm. Elder Parker, he's the minister here. So you say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. So Elder Park said, well, all these knots that he said we're not going to do, I don't got a problem with it, so I go start my own regime. And do your And thing. then so I don't teach ah, what I've always been taught. I got you. So then you. now you got to, so now what you said not is now his doctrine and tradition. And that's, yes. a, I love your example because the same thing that's happening in the natural, where the, as generations go, we, we take away, take away, take away. The same thing is happening in the church. Taken away, taken away. So what happened now, these people go out to pastor and they, they let down their God. They let down doctrine. Yes. So anything goes. Yes. And I will never do that in Scripture Cathedral. I'm sorry. As long as I'm pastor, that will never happen. Because, see, what you got to understand is once you get a crack in your foundation, I never forget before my father purchased the house he got, he looked at another house and we went in. And the, 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 the real estate agent was like, 
Bishop, you don't want this house. Bishop said, why not? He said, look at that. It's a crack in the foundation. Right. That means it's going to be problem. Yes. You don't want it. Yes. If you have a crack in your, in your ministry, you don't have no foundation that you're standing on, yes. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. And, and, and that foundation has to be, if, if it ain't built upon Christ, it's the wrong foundation. The wrong That's right. foundation. Because he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. church. What, a, what, what are natural foundations uh, made of, Elder Parker? Uh, concrete, concrete, right? Concrete. Steel. If you break up concrete, you can develop rocks, right? Yes, sir. All right. So you got to be built on the rock. Yes. Gotta be. You know, and, 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 and see, this is another thing. Your son over there, right? Yes, sir. He don't like the way things go on in scripture so he said you know what i'll go pastor but he ain't been in no bible class he ain't been he ain't been in no prayer meeting so he get there what they call it he gets an epiphany is that what they call it i can do this you can, see people said this i'm gonna tell you this is a hard job that i do yes you think it looks easy see you gotta understand but you gotta have a relationship with god because i have to have an understanding to break it down and see, I always tell people, see, some people be like, well, I'm older than him. And I, no. Do you think everybody that God uh, uh, um, uh, put over, Moses and all, or uh, 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 you name them, or do you think that they were older than everybody that they was over? No. That's right. It's not, it's not in the age. It's in a relationship. Yes, sir. That's what it is. You got yeah. to have a relationship with God. When you're a pastor, you got to. Because you, you listen, I don't want a doctor working on me that has not been to school and educated right. in that, like on my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't want a eye doctor working on my heart. Right. You know, Pastor D? I don't mean no harm. If I can't trust you, mm. I shouldn't be here. That's right. I, it's impossible for me, as a person, as a man, to let, let you guide my family, myself, my wife, and my children, right. and I can't trust you. Right. I have to know, as you as my pastor, that you will always have my best interests at heart, That's right. whether I like it or not. Now, you know, there's been times when me and you've been in conversations where you told me I was wrong. Right. As an elder, you said you were wrong. That's right. And I could have just got upset, walked out. No, because I know that you have my best interest and you care about me. That's and right. my best interest is always, you, you, you're not going to let me fall. And, I, and, not gonna, and if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm, I know that you're able to correct me. And, and that's the problem with people. They, you got to be able to trust your shepherd. If you can't trust them, then you're setting in the, you're setting in the wrong. And you got to trust him when, it's, when he tells you what's right. That's right. And when he tells you what's wrong. There's, with a shepherd heart, there is no in-between place. Mm. Right. He can't, he can't be on your side and not on your side. He has to tell you the truth because he got it. The accountability to God is five times as that on him as it is on you. Mm-hmm. And then you got to think about this. It's not just you. It's the other thousand other people that's sitting inside the church also. Mm -hmm. that, he's, that you're constantly being pulled this way or pulled that way. And, and it's not a one-day decision. It's an everyday decision. decision. You got to make a decision about which way God is leading this congregation. That's, right. that's why these seducing spirits and these traitors and heady and high-minded and all of these characteristics that you're seeing that we're talking about today these perilous times and the shepherd is trying to look warning mm -hmm. warning warning mm -hmm. warning and the warnings to keep coming but are we taking heed to what the men of god are saying and so you're absolutely right it's okay for me to say parker the Lord told me to tell you, right. by this time next year, you're going to have a new house. Right. Yes. It's okay. And, and, and God speaks to 
men of God like that during a service or any time. Mm -hmm. But once I say what God say, it is not my job to make it happen. Right. Yes, Absolutely. You got to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Now, some people block their own blessings because of disobedience. Yes. You get, you get where I'm going? Yes. Or something that they're omitting. Mm -hmm. If yes. you really, I never forget to ask my father. That's what I did. Do you preach this and you preach that? People get happy. Why are some of them still in the same state? He said, I'll tell you what, if they really sat down and checked their mm -hmm. record, record, it's something they're not doing. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's right. Because you see other people that are very successful mm -hmm. because they listen. They, they live by this. Right. Not only when they want something, but right. they just live by it. Totally. And what I found out is love hurts sometimes. Yes, sir. Yes. It ain't always good. It hurts. See, damn, Pastor, when when um, my children were when my children were coming up, um, what I had to do was when you when when you when you have to discipline them, mm. you discipline them, and then they still love you. Mm -hmm. You can't always you can't always be like you said. You can't always be lopsided with you know with uh, with discipline, and you can't always be lop lopsided with giving them gifts and presents and stuff like that. You have to be even across the board. Now, you know, now that they're grown, they're still, you know, they still love their father. But, you know, when it comes down to the, when it comes down to the ministry, when it, uh, when it comes down to people leaving, like you said, people going out, you know, start their own thing, what happens is sometimes people have their own agendas in their own heart, but all they need is a push mm. and that particular push is you correcting them I got you. because see the thing about it is if you if you let's say you pull my coat off and get a whip and just start whipping my oh God, then you know I'm gone because you know what people can't take uh, correction now because and then it's the way I look at you too mm -hmm. that determines what I do also because if I look at you as my spiritual father, now, oh man, he done, dang, man, my dad done beat me and carrying on, and he still, and then as soon as I come in the next day, how you doing, Pastor? I'm still hurting a little bit, but how you doing, Pastor? Mm -hmm. That's how you have to be. There's a, there's a difference between correction and abuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there there's is. There's a difference. Yes. There is a difference. There are things that, growing up, that I know I should have been reprimanded for or beat, right. but your parent right. let it slide. Mm -hmm. But there are other times they went to work. Yes. Now, a, a abusive hmm. person would beat you for nothing. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. Lord. Yes, sir. They, 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 they just, uh, and I, that's the way they are. And you was talking, something came to me. Some, see, you always, from the pulpit to the back door to the parking lot. If you are to leave a ministry, you should want to leave in good grace. Yes, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. yes, you do. Reason why is my daughter, if she says, I'm going on my own, she should always want to go on her own, but she should be able to want to come back yes. if something goes wrong or she just want to come back. Yes. There was a saying just said, when you're upset and you leave, oh, yeah. don't let the doorknob hit you. Don't let the, the doorknob fall off. That's right. Well, y'all, see, I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah. Don't let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord splits you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You don't leave wrong. You leave right. right. It's right. beneficial to you. Yes. And you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. Even, even, even when somebody's like a man of God is an authority, your pastor. Even if, he, if he's wrong, God has to deal with that. And I'm going to show you why. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet. So the anointed, people can be anointed. That's why he, he, he opened it up. Don't, no, that's my child. He's a, right, don't, right. But then when he comes back and says, and do my prophet no harm. Let me handle the prophet. Mm -hmm. And if I'm wrong, he will handle me. Yes. And you know, Pastor, people don't understand too that, you know, when you leave, you don't even have to leave. 
if you're in a ministry mm -hmm. and you have something in your heart. That's right. The Bible tells us to leave your gifts at the altar. That's right. And you're supposed to get it right mm -hmm. because you're not going to ex uh, excel. That's right. Succeed. You're not going to be blessed of God. He's not going to even hear your prayer mm. when you have aught in your heart, one towards another. another. Yes. You have to do it. People tell you now, you hear it, forgiveness is not for the other person, it's for you. <laughs> it's so that you can be free. Right. And I want to not just be free with people, but I want to be free with God so God can be free to bless me and yes. keep me and protect me and watch over me. So even if it might hurt me, I got to swallow my pride. And go to Elder John and say, you know what, Elder John said? I didn't like what you did to me or said me or what. But guess what? We brothers, man. Mm -hmm. I love you. And just because I forgive you don't mean I got to be with you. Don't mean I got to hang right. with you. Right. Don't mean I got to be up underneath you. But the, the clearness and the truth of your heart being set free by honestly forgiving and walk. Maybe it's just not meant for us to be friends like that no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I don't have to hate you. I don't have to hold nothing against you. But I got to get it right if I want to be blessed. Let me, let me ask you all a question. With Bishop and myself, have y'all ever been upset at your yes, man of God? Pastor D, but here's, here's, you know, here's, you know, here's a, you're right, but here's something that we need to think about. But, but I, I want you to say that, but I will tell you this. Some people, when they get upset, I can preach till the angels come down. You don't hear me because you're upset. Because you're upset. And that's what you said. You got to get it right. You got to get it right. Listen. I love Apostle CLO, and you know this. Right. I mean, Bishop was one of a kind, and Bishop could go up you one side mm -hmm. and come down the other. I remember when I first worked for Bishop, mm -hmm. my first encounter, you know, of getting in trouble or getting, you know, chastised or whatever by him in that fast as being an employee. You know, I'm downstairs in the office, and you know, whatever happened, happened, and I got lit up. Mm. And, I mean, I was mad. I was mad. And about three hours later, he came downstairs with his coat on. Get ready to go. He said, you going to get something to eat? And I was like, <laughs> "That's right." no, I don't want to go. He was like, you better get in this car and let's go. You know, but that was, that was his way. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I learned, anybody who can work for a real Right. Man of God, a real man. I ain't talking about just your boss out on the street. Because of the multi facets of the individual who is a pastor and the different hats they have to, it teaches you how to deal with people all throughout the world. That's right. Because he's not just your pastor. He's he's your pastor. He's your employer. Yeah. You know, he's a father figure. You know, then you know he, he's a friend to you. You know, so you have to learn how to differentiate between what hat and what moment he's in so when he's in boss mode and he's like you can't do that in my office that's right, right. and then when he's in father mode and he's like come on let's go get something you gotta be like i don't want to eat with you but i gotta go you know and then once you get to the table you get that good food it's all gone anyway hold so. on let me see what hat i want to put on hold on <laughs> <laughs> pastor <laughs> we were we were down nine to know and um that guy was down there doing that floor mm -hmm. and that that wooden floor right and um, I said, I said to Bishop, I said, Bishop, the floor need to be down in the concrete mm -hmm. in order for it to keep from waving. Right. He said, do you know how much that's going to cost? <laughs> he said, you must be crazy. Mm -hmm. Like that, right? I said, I ain't crazy. That's where it's going to be. So when I went back like that, and then you were <laughs> sitting there, you said, um, Parker, I think you need to be quiet and just listen to what he <laughs> has to say. And I did. Mm. And I did. Because, you know, sometimes as, you know, sometimes as, um, sometimes, like, you know, Bishop is our, is our father. You know, sometimes kids come back at their mm. dad and then, and the other brother say, hold up, man, you know, I think you need to be quiet because he get ready to go off on you. And then you just, you know, you just put your hand over your mouth. And that's the truth. I had that experience with you, Pastor, mm -hmm. years ago. I've never known you to say anything, mm -hmm. but we were sitting in uh, Bishop's office, and Bishop was going to me. He was going, 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 and I was just going, going, going. Bishop was always got. He was like, "Just shut up and listen." And I was above Bishop, da 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 da. And I don't remember what I said, 
But Pastor D was sitting in the chair up against, the, remember those two windows he had where he faced the parking yeah. lot? And you were sitting over there. He wasn't saying nothing. The man Bishop was just going, he was sitting over there. And Pastor D sat up in the chair, and I said something. He said, hey, Tim, <laughs> you still talking to my father? <laughs> and at that moment, I said, you know what, you're right. Because in my mind, I was saying, it's gone to a level that it shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. And because he's not that kind of person. Right. He was saying, okay, I got to let you know. Yeah, he's your pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's your boss. Yeah. But that's my dad, and you going just a little, little bit. So there's some other kind of feelings. Yeah. Now it's about to rise up. That's right. That window and was. That, exactly. <laughs> and, and, I, and I wasn't trying to get, get slung across the room. Right. So I said, okay, well, let me, let me uh, go ahead. You right, Bishop. You right. Yeah. But in all of that, in all of that, talking about having an alt or whatever, we were always able to get it right. Yes. We was always able yes. to go back and say, well, Bishop, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Or yes. He would say to you, you know, if you listen to me, I'm, you know, I, I don't mean that um, people may not believe this, but I told Pastor D this. I, I would say we was in Bishop's Mercedes one day. It was just him and I. Mm -hmm. And we were leaving the, this, this when we was doing D.C. And in Maryland, and, yeah. And we was leaving from here, getting ready to go get something to eat. And Bishop looked at me and he said, if I ever did anything wrong mm -hmm. to hurt you, wow, yeah, forgive me. Yeah, and I was exactly. like, yeah, I'm like, we good. I ain't thinking nothing. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. But because he was a man of God of integrity, yes. Whether it was something that had happened at that moment, which it wasn't, mm -hmm. or years before, he always wanted to make sure. Yep. And he yes. always told us, Elder D, don't wait till somebody's gone. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you can't get it right at that point. Nope. You better get it right. So even him being in his position, and I would say 95, 99.9% .9 of the time, if he got on me, he was right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But he still had enough God in him to say, if I did anything wrong, oh, yeah. that's right. forgive me. Because he wanted his slate, because he was a blessed man to God. He wanted to remain to be blessed. Yeah. To your point, I remember one service. He apologized to my mother, mm -hmm. me, and, and I'm like, why are you doing that? Right. You yes. get y'all don't remember that? Yes, sir. You have to have a lot of integrity. Yes. yes to sir. do that. Yes, sir. You yes. do. Mm -hmm. You do. Mm -hmm. And and especially, see, I'm gonna show you from this aspect. Now that I've been pastoring, you at the top. You really don't have nobody to go to. So things become, it's going to be my way. You, you got to be careful of that. You understand what I'm saying? Because somebody could give me good advice and I'd be like, no, it's gonna, we're going to do it this way. Because you don't have the, the, the luxury of saying to, to, to certain things. Like certain things I could come and consult with y'all, but certain things I can't. So I got to make the decision. Yes, sir. You know, mm -hmm. and then if I make the wrong decision, I got to be pastor enough to say I was wrong. I'm sorry or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the way you got to be. But some people don't have that. It's, it's going to be this way or whatever, or whatever. And then you look up and you ain't got nobody. Nobody. Let, let me go to this last one, this last scripture. And it's going to let you understand why the church is having a great falling away. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 and 7. Galatians 5 and 7. Mm. Who did hinder you that ye yeah. should not believe the truth? Hmm. Wait a minute. Who? <laughs> Who? Let me keep saying that. Who? <laughs> not what? Who? And in the New Testament, in, the, in translation, uh, the New um, Living Translation is you ran well, who hindered you from obeying the truth? So, if a person run in Christianity is hindered, mm -hmm. it's, not about, it's not because of stuff. No. Right. It's because of a person. Because of a person. A being. Yes. I've seen deacons mm -hmm. leave the church because of their wives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Who? 
I've seen people leave because of another person. Somebody can get in your ear. Yes, sir. But this is what I found out. We got Deacon Rodney and Deacon John sitting over there. Deacon Rodney doing everything the pastor say. And then Deacon John, he, he knows how to uh, throw little, little things in his mind. Mm -hmm. They both deacons. Mm -hmm. They both scripture cathedral deacons. Yes, sir. But he said, man, I don't see why we got to go out there and it's snowing. Everybody else ain't out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Get, this is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Man, why we got to come down here on Saturday and clean the church? It can't be that dirty. Don't buy, we only have one servant. Putting things in his mind. Yes. So That's right. Yes. Seducing spirit. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, now it's that who kicking in. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, but what I found out is, mm -hmm. once the seducer mm -hmm. gets it into the seducee, mm -hmm. the seducee will leave and the seducer will still be yes. here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what you call an inside job. Yes, yes sir. That's why you got to expose the seducer. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. he so. Has, he has more work to do. Oh. That's why he's still here. More, more seducing. Yes, he has more work to do. So that's a good one right there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Satan places people in ministry? Yes, yes sir. Do you, do, you think he, uh, do you think in some kind of way, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm going to back it up. They get to certain levels in ministry? Yes, yes sir. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Some people are God ordained. Sometimes the man of God, by your actions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes we not, you know, I might see somebody that's faithful and coming. Mm -hmm. And I don't even pray about it, but like, you know what, they might be a good deacon. They might right. be a good, so you put them there. Yes, yes. sir. Mm -hmm. The mistake was, I should have prayed about it. Yes, sir. There's a scripture in the Bible, oh, I wish Saudi was here, because he, he remembered this, that says, I think he quoted it the other night. Let them prove themselves yeah. first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the first, that book of Timothy. Is that mm -hmm. Timothy? Yes, let them prove their self first. Mm -hmm. And then let them. Then let them. Use the office, mm -hmm. of, a use the office of a deacon. Yes, sir. That should be all around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think because a person been here a minute. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. You got to prove yourself. Yes, sir. Pastor, I believe people can prove themselves. And, and still get. they prove themselves. And I'm glad you said that. Why, why do, when people re reach certain positions in ministry, once they get there, they show you another side? You can take it from even a natural effect. Okay. Or a aspect. Um, you want the job. You want the job. You want mm. the job. Mm. And you say, oh, I do that. I do that on my job. I, but every job is different. Right. Even though it may be in that field. Uh, each entity, uh, each uh, employer or location may run it differently. So then once you get the job and then you realize all that it has to entail. That's true. And then you realize, well, before I was a deacon, mm. I, when the church dismissed, I could walk out the door. Mm. When, uh, because everybody wants status. Everybody wants, That's not right. everybody, but majority of people. That's right. And if you're in something, you want to evolve. You want to, you know, move up. Right. But then once you realize what it all entails, mm. you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, like, you know, Elder Parker down at the Ninth and Old Church in the Chocolate <laughs> Park, you know, when you realize <laughs> the backup. when you get in the office of a deacon That's right. and the backup happened, you know what yes. I'm saying? And then you, you do that. And then, like you said, then there is always a mixed multitude. There's always a seducer. That's right. And everything. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I was good when I started, but then I got that seducer saying, man, I ain't going down in that hole with Let me ask you a question. You're the chairman of the deacon board, right? Do you have any seducers on your board? No. <laughs> no. I do not. No. Good answer. Good answer. See, there's a difference between a seducing spirit and looking up to somebody to get better. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a difference. You got to know how. Because, see, sometimes people, because I've been here longer than you, you think I know the way. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily true. See, Pastor, people that use, it, that, that use their 
positions mm -hmm. and stuff to influence other people, that's wrong. Mm. When you do that. You know what? I will never say, I'm, let me take that back, it depends. But I would never say to people, I don't have to say this. I'm the pastor. Right. I ain't got to say that. Right. Absolutely. I ain't got to say it. Absolutely. Y'all don't have to say it. I'm an elder. You don't have to say no, it. No, you don't. Your work proves it. Yes. And people know who you are because of what you do. This, Especially if you're faithful if in I, what you're doing. If I have to say I'm the pastor, that means I'm questioning my authority. Right. Right? Yes. You shouldn't have to say that. It's almost like I ain't got to tell promise I'm the daddy in here. Right. Huh? They know. Because you know what? When my kids was younger, again, they know, knew when I put that key in the door. Uh-huh. Oh, daddy's here. Daddy's here. You get him whispering and running and, <laughs> and moving and stuff. Daddy's here. Daddy's here. That's right. They know. Because when you walk in, we know pastor's here. Or when Elder Johnson walked, well, Elder Johnson is here. Right. We already know. Or the chairman of the deacon board. He's here. That's and right. that's and there's supposed to be a level of respect automatically. Ah. You're not because you are an elder, that don't that doesn't mean I'm supposed to down talk him, right. or down talk any of those deacons, because first of all, when they're in their when they're in their place of work or or let's say you tell Timmy um, um, Deacon Smith to get the, the basket, right? And then if I come down to try to put something in the basket, uh, Deacon Smith can say, don't put it in there yet because you're going to create a problem for everybody else. Right. Because when he's in his position, then everybody that's under him or even over him is supposed to respect his position. That's right. And I come to find this, Pastor, I don't have a heart. It's not hard for me to respect you because I respected you before you right. got into the position. I respect you as a person. Right. Yes. That's right. So it, makes, it, it doesn't make it hard for me to respect your authority. Right. And I respect you as yep. a person. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, and you never gave me any reason not to respect and you. And th this is what I'm getting ready to say. If I was nasty and mean, you know how hard it would be for me to pastor this mm -hmm. church? Yes, sir. Because people are like, what? Oh, boy, here right. we go. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you, your character. Your character. You got to have certain characteristics in any position in ministry. You got to. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have them, you got to build them. Yes, sir. Because respect, you don't, you, respect isn't given, it's earned. Yes. You got to understand that you, you, you can't treat people any kind of way. Right. Because you don't know what you're going to be the next day. Yes, That's right. If you, listen, like I'm just saying, you, you out, you're a member, a brother sitting out there